goal was to go from Rhodes End to Rhodes End on a north-south course around the world, entirely on land except for the South Atlantic. This was all during still Soviet Union time, very regulated travel, to end in Gambik, Norway. That was a five-year trip. Over the years, the Jeep sat, and last April, we shipped it to Israel, and we completed what we called the final mile. Um, this is a 1966 CJ5. Pretty much everything's stock. There really isn't a lot of things aftermarket on this. There is an electric fuel filter, roll bar he put in. He had three previous attempts to do this, and all of them ended up in failure. Lauren is six foot four. Normally, this is a shorter roof by four inches. Well, in order for him to see out the windshield, he cut the hard top off, raised it these four inches, and that's what you see this wood covering that gap, and then you'll notice all these bolts on the, on the door where he had a length in the door. Again, it was designed for Lauren to sit in. Doesn't have power brakes or power steering, which I found out. And you're not gonna be able to see it, but there's a nut welded to the axle and the frame, front, rear, both sides. If you're on a side hill in the Darien Gap, they were more cumbersome than either uphill or downhill, because side hills have a tendency, gravity takes over and you're gonna go tumbling. So we use the high lift jack and jack up the, the low side and put the side hill adjusters in there, front and rear, tighten them down, and that would level it out, shift some of that weight back to center, and it took some of the bounce out of the springs. So if you were going on uneven ground, this was before air lockers, or at least definitely before lockers we had. And then the chains in the end of the bumper weren't for decoration. If it was a really steep side hill, he'd put the side hill adjusters on, and then we'd run a cable up the hill, put a snatch block here, and then a snatch block on the rear chain, and a cable went between them all, and it would be like a train on a track. It would, it would ride on that, right on that cable going around a side hill or down a side hill or whatever it happened to be. And there's different things. When we were going through the jungle in Darien Gap, that was a true expedition. That was where we hired people, natives to search trail, find a trail through, because our goal was to remain entirely on land to go through that section. And we were the first to do that. There's been other vehicle expeditions through there, but all of the others traveled up the rivers or down the rivers to avoid difficult areas. That was what we did not do. We crossed a river, but never traveled up or down it to avoid a difficult area. These were for our cooking equipment, our stove, food. We had Tupperware containers back here with our food in it. When we broke down uh, near the Nile River in northern Sudan, we had to figure out how we were getting out. We knew that the last person we saw was a goat herder 90 miles back. There was no civilization anywhere where we were. So we came back and we used some silicon sealant and sealed the seams on this box. And we floated down the river for two and a half days until we found somebody in a little cone tent Latches on the outside became a necessity only because the doors started popping open and then they started popping open so, so bad we have them on the inside as right. well. Yeah, making the bed was a... Drop this curtain down. These boards come out and this board comes out. And they swing around and they lay on top of an angle iron up here across the front. And then those two boards go right over the top of this and Lauren would sleep with his head in one corner and his feet in the other, and I could pretty much lay lengthwise. Now going through the Darien Gap in the jungle portion, I had made mosquito netting with magnets on it so I could magnetize and put mosquito netting up and leave the doors all open. I slept inside. Lauren slept on this table bed. This is a, a Wild Scott two-ton come-along. We called it a come-along. I think the legal term is a puller, I'm not sure. This saved our bacon going through the Darien Gap many times. We got stuck in one area, and Lauren's nephew was with us for the first 30 days going through the Darien Gap. And this had to come into play when we were on such a steep hill, we'd lost oil pressure in the Jeeps. And without oil pressure, you can't use the winch. Lawrence was the one using the come along, but he's also the one that spearheaded the Restore Jeep project to get the Jeep ready to take us to the final mile last year. Without this gentleman and Mike Merck, his, his sidekick back there, we wouldn't be here. He always says, how many people know what they wanted to do when he was seven years old? He did. He knew exactly what he wanted to do when he was seven years old. 